Good Friday morning. Children, who teaches them to do that? <laughs> it's a question every parent has asked their spouse at one time or another while raising children. Children do not come with an instruction manual, but they certainly do have the playbook on disobedience. Whoever believes that humans are good and born with moral purity, they've never had children. How often have I seen the Lord use my own imperfection to teach me about the life that he offers? In today's passage, after feeding the 5,000, Jesus sent the disciples across the Sea of Galilee. He came to them walking on the water, and when they got to the other side of the lake, Jesus kept talking to the assembled crowd. If left to our own devices, we don't become better and better. Quite the contrary, we move further and further from goodness. We grow increasingly self-centered. We start it when we're children and it continues right into adulthood. This is why Jesus can so plainly say, no one can come unless the Father draws him. It is not by our will that we're called to the Father. It's impossible to come to Jesus without being called by Father God. Salvation is never achieved apart from the drawing power of the Father, and it's never consummated apart from the willingness of we as humans to hear and respond to God's call. Since Jesus has seen God the Father face to face, he knows the will and the plan of the Father. This makes Jesus the only mediator between humanity and Father God. And he tells people, tells us, that he offers life based on belief. If we accept this offer, eternal life is ours, not on this earth, but with him in eternity. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. He explains this by reminding them of their own history. When the children of Israel were wandering in the desert after being set free by the Lord from Egypt, they were fed this mysterious food called manna. Nevertheless, the manna didn't give them eternal life. Jesus tells them, I am the ultimate manna from heaven. If you eat this bread, you'll never die. Instead of simply offering a temporary solution, the living bread of Jesus has provided a permanent solution for our sins. In our marked imperfection, we couldn't get to God, so God came to us. Using a startling metaphor, Jesus tells us we are dead unless we eat his flesh and drink his blood. Jesus' offer of life is based on becoming one with him. Jesus voluntarily chose to lay down his life for you and for me and feed us with the ultimate soul food, living bread from heaven's throne. And as we take his body and his blood, we join with him and enjoy the life that he died to bring us. Jesus is the bread that came down from heaven. In the great irony of a relationship with Christ, we must die to ourselves if we're going to live in him. Dear Lord, thank you for your amazing love and grace that you have bestowed on me. Thank you for being the living bread which came from heaven. Your love and your grace it sustains me, gives me life. Help me to take your word to heart and to truly take them within my inner being. As I take your bread of life, I will live forever. May I never forget the sacrifice that you made for me, that I may have eternal life. I'm forever grateful to you, Lord, for your love and for your mercy. And I pray all this in the holy name of Jesus Christ, my Lord. Amen. God bless you. See you tomorrow.